Hey everybody, I think I'm just gonna wait. I'm gonna start playing music. There we go. Hey everybody, it is Thursday. My name is Emmy Kirshner and welcome to the fourth day of Sales to Scale, the challenge. Um, today we are gonna be talking about your offers and where to find all those leads so that you can fill your pipeline consistently month after month. So let's dive in. I have some fun pictures for you today. Um, <coughs> still coughing, but I think not as bad as yesterday. And um, I think I mentioned on Tuesday that we're in Mercury retrograde as well. And um, it's a time when things just don't work as smoothly as they would we would like them to. So if you're having challenges with technology, um, transportation, communication in general, things are just kind of botched up. Remember to take it easy um, and allow, <coughs> hey Eileen, how are you? Good morning. And allow, you know, whatever it is not to freak you out. Um, I literally had my computer not work this morning and I was like, ah, um, and not freaking out, but just like, why would it suddenly not turn on? Um, and, you know, Mercury retrograde or not, the more you can be chill about those things and just work through the problem, um, the easier it is that so your energy will stay at a higher level and you'll be able to um, really create more impact, right? Being in kind of anxiety or panic, you can't put your best um, foot out forward. Yes, right? I'm so glad my computer's, um, my computer's working too. So anyways, let's dive in. Um, one of the things I see all the time is, and I've done this myself early on, is you have, most entrepreneurs have what I refer to as entrepreneur disease, or um, they have squirrels where they start a lot of different things and don't finish any of them and they have a lot of different things different offerings different products different courses different programs all out there that aren't generating revenue and maybe you launch something and all you heard was crickets and you're like fine and then you kind of just shelved it and created something else or you're halfway through that idea and you um think of something else so you start working on that which is great it's awesome to have a ton of ideas and <clears throat> what I'm going to suggest to you is just start creating a list because you want to stay super focused with what you're offering. And what I'm going to share with you can work for essentially any business. It doesn't necessarily have to look exactly the way I'm. Uh, hey, James, how are you? Um, it doesn't have to look exactly the way I'm going to share it, but I'm going to, I'm going to go over a couple of different options for you. The key thing with your offerings is that you want to have a place to come in for people to come in at a couple of different levels, right? Not everybody is going to be ready to work with you at a high, high level. Some people need to check you out. It's, you know, getting to build or building that know, like, and trust. And you want to be able to take it from one step to, step to the next, but you also want to know what problem each of your offerings is solving, okay? And this is where having a bunch of different things that you've put out there or that are half finished isn't serving you and it's not serving your clients to the best of your ability and being able to make the impact where you want to. So I made a super cool little chart right here for you. And I think you can read it. Let me know if you can. I'll try to move the computer up. Um, a little bit for you, but your your customer's journey, let's just say if we're gonna take it in a linear perspective, which again, it may not happen, but you wanna think about it, you know, from your leads coming in and, and what you're offering, how are you taking them step by step by step so that they work with you over and over and over again? And maybe for some of you, you have product offerings or you have multiple, you know, um, products that you can offer. Think about like what the average low end or, or lower end investment is and what the higher end one is too. How you can bundle things together, etc. Um, even for my clients who are in real estate, for instance, you know, you 
really have one product or one service and that you're either helping them buy or sell. But think about, you know, do you have different tiered customers? Maybe you're the first time buyer and people who are downsizing. Maybe their investment levels or what they're buying is different. So just look at those types of things, right? But think about what are you offering that's free or low entry, right? That gets people in the door that you can share with them. And maybe it's even just sharing an article with them. Maybe it's um, you know, something that allows them to get a feel for who you are and, you know, again, what problem you, you're potentially solving for them. Then you want to move up into the middle range, maybe, and I would say this middle high range. So you um, may have, you know, five different things. You may have three, you may have two. That's okay. But this is where you want to be selling your core stuff. This is what you sell the most of. This is the thing that you're looking at, <clears throat> at when you're um, calculating your leads that you want to be and calculating revenue that you want to be kind of basing this um, or those numbers on and then looking at what the upsell and downsells are, right? Because your super high level stuff um, may not be, you know, maybe you only do a few of those a year and yes, they may be the biggest, um, you know, investment per client, right? But they will probably be fewer than what you're selling right here. Okay. So if, let me know if you have any questions or if that makes sense. I don't see any other comments in the comment section, which is cool. Um, so this is really, really important. As I said, just if you're coming in and just listening now, you want to streamline your offerings. It's super important. And um, you want to make sure that you know what it is that you're delivering from the results standpoint, because that's going to, again, inform your market or marketing. And when you get into the sales calls and you're talking to your clients, whether it's an actual sales call or you're on a landing page, etc., you want to know and be able to talk about, you know, what it is that is going to happen for them. How are they transforming by them investing in you, whether it's a product or service? How are they getting their problem solved? Remember on, um, I think it was Tuesday when we talked about the three mindsets, this, the mindset of sales, of serving, is that you are a problem solver and you're there to help them you know, have whatever their need is resolved. And you're the only one who can do that because you are the one that is you know, uniquely you and offering things in the way that you do. And that's super important as well. Okay, so I'm gonna hop over here to, and um, I should move my coffee. There we go. I'm gonna, second thing I want you all to think about, hold on. <clears throat> There's literally nowhere in my apartment to have like a really cool whiteboard um, or to hang one. So the second thing, let me see, we'll go this way, there, that I want you to start looking at and your homework for today is going to be look at your offerings, one, and two, um, well, all of one, but your homework is look at your offerings, look if they're streamlined, look if they make sense. Can people automatically in their head see themselves going from one piece to the next piece to the next piece? And if you have you know, more than five offerings, what can you streamline? What can you, um, you know, either combine, reduce, eliminate, etc so that you have something that is streamlined and is easy for people to um, you know, envision themselves seeing you, you know, working with you uh, for a longer period of time. So from a perspective of how am I going to find those leads? Where am I going to get people hopping into my pipeline, right? Your leads are everywhere. I have like found clients literally in the grocery store line just because I talk to everybody. And I'm not saying you have to talk to everybody, but I want you to start thinking about that. Your, your clients are everywhere from the grocery store line to online to people that you know and you haven't talked to in forever. And there are one of the biggest things people do is we don't follow up enough, right? We don't think about, oh, hey, I had this conversation and maybe they you know, didn't get on the call with you. Maybe they... Um, you know, they didn't 
they didn't need your services at the time and then we kind of let them drop off right so start initiating conversations so the other piece of your homework is to make a list of 100 leads now you're probably thinking oh my goodness where am i going to get 100 leads go through your contact list and look at you know who haven't you talked to in a while who haven't um you connected with who kind of fell off who wasn't maybe a lead you know a month ago two weeks ago a year ago reach out to them start having those conversations okay because what happens when you start having conversations and you start entering into this relationship let's see if i can get this over here a little bit more when you start entering into this relationship right <clears throat> you're starting to get to know people and maybe they're not going to buy from you right this second but i like always amazed when people call me and i see this with my clients too where they've known you they've watched you they've you know maybe they've they've engaged with some of your free or low entry stuff and they're like i'm ready to go now here's my credit card number right so that does happen all the time and the really cool thing here is as you're establishing the relationship with somebody you get to determine the problem okay you get to figure out what it is that they need from you. And from a conversation standpoint, like let's say you reached out to 10 people this week they haven't talked to in a while. And it can be simple conversations with like, hey, wanted to reconnect with you, see how everything is going, you know, COVID, how are you managing, <coughs> excuse me, et cetera, et cetera. And share with them what's new and exciting that's going on for you, right? And when people respond to that, you can ask them, well, what resonates with you? It's a great way to get information. It's a great way to start identifying and determining what their problem is. Once you've done that, you can get into offering the solution, right? Hey, did you know that I have this really cool group program or, you know, I help my clients with something very similar to that is easy peasy conversation and you get to start to go into this piece as i said of offering the solution they start seeing you as the person who solves their problem right and then we're going to go into closing the sale and i'm actually going to do a whole training tomorrow on overcoming objections and closing so um i kind of switched the topics up but i think this is going to help you all the most right and then once you've closed the sale, once you're in delivery, once you're in that place of creating an amazing experience for them, you want to be in this follow up and retain, connect with them, check in with them. Hey, how is this working for you? You know, do you need help with anything? Right. And then it's just kind of continuing that circle again and again. What can I help you with now? And then creating that elevation of um, where, you know, where they can move up into yeah, where they can move up into your ladder or your steps or your mountain or whatever you want to call it. Okay. Now the key here is it takes anywhere from 12 to 20 touches. And this is why I said earlier, you don't want to give up. Like until somebody was like, no, you know, I don't want to work with you ever in my entire life. Keep following up. Um, I tell my clients, and I think I've shared this before, I followed up with uh, one of my clients now every week for a year. And we've been working together for almost two years now. And had I not followed up, she wouldn't have been, had me top of mind. Now, I'm not suggesting that you need to follow up with all of your prospective leads you know, every week for a year. We had made an agreement because she had some stuff going on in her life that she needed to move through before she could get started that that was the case, but I wanted to make sure that she was thinking of me. So don't be afraid to reach out and, and again, connect and talk to your people over and over and over again, because we're all inundated. Think about how many emails you get of you know, different things that you're on lists for every day, right? And everything that's going on in the world, it's easy to allow your problems to stay where they're at and it's the same thing with your clients. It's easy to let them stay, you know, for them to stay where they're at and let everything else overwhelm them. So you want to create a place and conversation and trust and authenticity of where they are or where they're at and where they can help, or where you can help them. So again, 
um, today's homework is one, check out your offers. Are they aligned with your client avatar? Are they aligned with what your purpose is? Are they aligned with your vision? Are they, you know, are they streamlined from the perspective of it's easy for somebody to envision themselves working with you over and over again, right? And then are you communicating that? And the second one is to go through your contact list and look at who you haven't talked to and create a 100 lead list, okay? And if 100 seems like forever, get started. Like just start making that list, other people will come in. Because the really cool thing is when you get into these conversations and when you start creating um, connections and, and you're talking to people is that people will come in, your prospects will come in um, from different places, not just in establishing the relationships section or not just from reach outs. Sales is not linear. It's the energy that you're putting out and looking for the sale and looking for new clients that allows things to come back to you. Okay, so I hope that's super helpful. As always, if you've got questions, comments, want to see them um, down below and your homework for today is um, offerings, look at you know what you have and what's streamlined and then um, do your 100 lead list. So when that's complete, post um, in, the, in the comments, like a thumbs up or a gif or whatever makes you feel amazing. I will chat with you all later and have a great day. Bye.